Hi guys, thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about two conditions which are very closely related to each other. One is called pernicious anemia and one is called chronic atrophic gastritis. The reason I put these two together because they are very closely related to each other like father and son. And uh, they increase the risk of us developing stomach cancer. So what is pernicious anemia? Pernicious anemia is basically vitamin B12 deficiency. Now what can cause vitamin B12 deficiency? There are many causes of vitamin B12 deficiency. Obviously, some people don't eat food which is rich in vitamin B12, especially people who are purely vegan or vegetarians, but the requirement of B12 in our body is so low that even they will probably gain enough B12 in the food they eat so deficiency is perhaps related to diet must be very very uncommon the second is surgery on the stomach because as i will discuss earlier stomach is very important to absorb vitamin b12 and if their stomach been removed for say for example as we discussed in my previous video for stomach cancer or stomach ulcers then there will not be enough stomach to help absorb vitamin b12 then surgery on the small intestine and when I say small intestine, the most important part of the small intestine is the ileum, which is the third part of the small intestine. If you don't uh, not sure about the anatomy of the digestive system, please watch my first two videos in this series, and it will tell you what the ileum is and uh, where it is. The next disease is Crohn's disease. Now this affects the small intestine, hence it cannot let a vitamin B12 to be absorbed. The reason I say terminal part of the small intestine or the ileum because that is the part of our gut where vitamin B12 is absorbed. Last but not the least, in certain parts of the world, not very common in the West, are certain parasites and worms which can stop absorption of vitamin B12 because they consume, they eat up B12. Now, on the other hand, I put one condition called autoimmune. Autoimmune basically means, as you all know what immunity is, immunity is the defense mechanism in our body. We have different types of cells, uh, lymphatic areas, which are lymph glands, spleen, bone marrow, etc., which produce these special cells, which defend our body against all the nasties which are trying to get into our body, like bacteria, viruses, parasites, um, flus, colds, all those things, is trying to fight it. Autoimmune means when our own body starts reacting against our own tissues. So like, for example, in arthritis, the cells in our body are damaging our own tissues, our own joints and our muscles. Before we go any further, I'm just going to recap from my previous videos that what does stomach produce? Stomach produces, as we, know, all, as we all know, acid, which is hydrochloric acid, produces an enzyme called pepsinogen, which helps us break down proteins, produces mucus, which protects the stomach against its own acid and stops it getting damaged and stops making the ulcers, etc. Now, this thing you need to think about, and just remember this last thing, which is called intrinsic factor. This is a protein which is produced by cells of the stomach. This is the factor which is important in what we are going to talk about today. So we eat vitamin B12 um, in meat, eggs, uh, um, lentils, etc., uh, etc. Et so things which are rich in, in proteins also contain vitamin B12. And... Uh, so we eat vitamin B12, comes down into the stomach and vitamin B12 joins forces with intrinsic factor. So intrinsic, intrinsic factor acts like a carrier, like a lorry taking the load around the country. So what it does, vitamin B12 uh, hitches a ride on uh, intrinsic factor, goes to the small intestine. Now I've drawn this as a very short bit. This is normally 18 feet of it. Uh, which you can see in my first two videos in the series. And when it comes to the last bit, just before the large intestine start, that's a large intestine colon, that's the appendix, just before it, large last foot or two of the small intestine is where intrinsic factor uh, dumps its load into the bloodstream. So vitamin B12 gets absorbed with intrinsic factor into the bloodstream in the last part of the small intestine. 
So if this part of the small intestine has been removed surgically, or if it's diseased, like in Crohn's disease, then vitamin B12 cannot be absorbed because this is the only part where vitamin B12 gets absorbed. Also, as I discussed before, if we remove the stomach, there is no intrinsic factor. So surgery on the stomach, removing the whole of the stomach, there is no intrinsic factor. So vitamin B12 cannot hitch a ride on, on intrinsic factor to get absorbed. Now I'm going to talk about how these two things are related to each other. Okay, so I have drawn a few pictures over here. In this one, if you focus on this one, this is the stomach, the black lining outside. The red paving I've done inside, like cobblestone, these are the cells of the stomach. And this, let's presume these are normal. This is normal stomach. Normal cells. These cells are going to produce acid, enzymes, intrinsic factor, and mucus. Yeah. Now, what happens in atrophic gastritis that for some reason or the other, we're not sure exactly what reason it is, but our own immune cells, which I've drawn over here, which is our own immunity, which are usually the white blood cells in our body, they start attacking the cells in our stomach. So the red cells, all, that, all the paving I have drawn over here, it's being destroyed. You can see it's being replaced by scar tissue. So this green I made as scar tissue. Now this does not happen over days, weeks or months, but happens over many, many years. So cells getting, keep getting destroyed, keep getting destroyed and new cells form. However, time comes when new cells cannot form because they get so scarred. So stomach lining start getting replaced by scar tissue. Why this happens, uh, honestly, I don't know and I don't think many people know. In many of these patients, many of these patients with atrophic gastritis, there is a presence of the bacteria we spoke about before uh, called Helicobacter pylori, which I talked about uh, in relation to the stomach ulcers. I also spoke to you about this bacteria in relation to the stomach cancer. Many of these patients have this bacteria present, Helicobacter pylori. Now, important to know about Helicobacter pylori, that's the infection of Helicobacter pylori in the stomach is very, very common. And many of these patients will never get any problems from Helicobacter pylori. However, some patients are going to get inflammation of the stomach, will get ulcers of the stomach. Some patients will even get cancer of the stomach. And since Helicobacter pylori is present in many of these patients who develop atrophic gastritis, this is what we call atrophic gastritis. Now, atrophy or atrophy or atrophy, whatever you want to call it, basically means that things are dying off. Yeah, They are um, withering away, literally withering away. So like you have uh, leaves from the tree falling off in the fall or in the autumn. Same thing happening over here. The cells are dying off. And what's killing them are our own uh, defense cells, like the soldiers in our body who are supposed to kill the nasty things coming into our body are, as a matter of fact, killing our own stomach cells. Stomach keeps trying and produce more cells to repair itself. However, time comes when it cannot repair itself and it start getting replaced by scar tissue. With time, again, over again, many, many years, when this damage continues to grow, then all the stomach cells or most of the sub stomach cells are gone. So we don't have any acid in the stomach. We don't have any enzyme or pepsinogen in the stomach. And there is no intrinsic factor left in the stomach either. So without intrinsic factor, what happens? We cannot absorb vitamin B12. As I said before, the carrier which is going to carry vitamin B12 from the stomach to the small intestine to be absorbed is gone. Once that is gone, patients get pernicious anemia. So that is how they are related to each other. Now, just to talk about a bit more atrophic gastritis, why did I say it's a precancerous condition? The reason is some of the cells do try and form back. Yeah? Little islands of cells start forming back, but they are not normal stomach cells. You can see I draw normal stomach cells as red, but here they're a different color. And they look more like small intestinal cells. 
This condition is called metaplasia, a complex name, really don't need to think about it too much. However, this condition start increasing the risk of developing stomach cancer. When the endoscopist put the camera down, they can see these little areas or red patches are drawn blue, but they look like red patches in the stomach. What the stomach looks like in atrophic gastritis, in atrophic gastritis, the stomach looks flat. So normally, our stomach got creases on it, like you have a bed sheet with creases on it. But if you iron the bed sheet, completely iron it, it looks completely flat. There won't be any creases, any folds in it. The stomach looks totally flat. And you will see these red patches on the lining of the stomach. This, these red patches warns the endoscopist there's something funny going on here. So the symptoms of atrophic gastritis are very, can be very subtle at times, sometimes none at all, um, until it's quite advanced and um, the stomach has been replaced by scar tissue or funny cells in it as well. But sometimes patients get very you know, mild symptoms like abdominal pain, pain in the pit of the stomach. In digestion, they're getting burning pain. They start getting weight loss as the disease progresses. They start feeling sick, feeling nauseous, vomiting. But then as disease progresses, becomes more advanced, patients start getting symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency. And what are the symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency? Vitamin B12 supports many different parts of our body. It really is a very important vitamin. It supports our blood cells. So if the vitamin B12 is low, our blood cells become very big. So instead of being flat like this, our red blood cells, which carry oxygen in the, in the blood, from our lungs to our tissue, they become very round and big. They are called megaloblasts. Mega means large. So from this size, they'll become this size. The problem with the large cells is, large cells cannot go through tight spaces. So some of the blood vessels are some of the spaces in the bone marrow where the cells are formed normally. We'll talk about in our future videos how blood is formed. But those cells cannot squeeze through. They cannot squeeze through, so the blood count goes down. And also when they try and try and squeeze through these tight spaces, they start getting damaged, they start bursting. Like you try and squeeze a balloon through a very tight, sharp um, hole, it'll burst. And same thing happens with these cells. So their life becomes less and they start bursting. So patients start losing blood and become anemic. Vitamin B12 also affects our nerves. It keeps our nerves stable. It's like having compost, or fertilizer in our plants. Without the fertilizer, plants will start dying. Same thing happens with vitamin B12. There is no vitamin B12 because we're not absorbing it anymore. The nerves start getting damaged. And one of the main nerves that start getting damaged are nerves to our ears. So you get ringing ears. Um, they get constant ringing in the ears. Second thing happens, the nerves going to our legs and to our arms, they start getting damaged. For that, the patients start walking like they're drunk. And also they start getting pins and needles in their fingers, in their hands and in their feet as well. So uh, feel like there's constantly some insects running on their, on their skin. That's how it feels with vitamin B12 deficiency. So how is it diagnosed, atrophic gastritis so, and pernicious anemia? So, First of all, we go to the, to the doctor. So all those symptoms, I go to the doctor, doctor examines me. So on examination, doctor can see that I'm very pale because my blood count is low, so I'm anemic. Also can see I can't walk in a straight line. So if you draw a line on the, on the ground and ask me to walk over it, I can't walk over it easily. He examines my ears. There's nothing wrong with my ears, but I'll still get ringing ears. Then he feels my tummy and my tummy, um, has got um, soreness in the middle of the tummy when he presses. Then he sends me for blood test. Now blood tests could be for many reasons. One of uh, the blood tests is could be to diagnose bacteria Helicobacter pylori. Not a most reliable blood test because Heli Helicobacter pylori, even if it was present in the past, not present now, the blood test might still be positive. However, blood tests will show that I'm anemic, my blood count is low. Also show that my cells are very big that we talked about earlier, megaloblasts rather than small normal cells. My cells are very big and it can also show the antibodies which are attacking my stomach. 
it can be tested for that as well. It will also show that there are certain substances which will go up because our stomach is so damaged that it's not producing acid anymore. So there's a substance called gastrin which goes up in the bloodstream. So all these things in the blood test will show that there is a possibility of pernicious anemia or atrophic gastritis. Stool tests can also be done to check for helicobacter pylori. And the most important test that comes in is endoscopy and biopsy. And the doctor will refer me to an endoscopist or endoscopy center where a camera will put down from my mouth into my stomach. The appearances of the stomach um, are very classical. The stomach has got no creases on it, does not look like wrinkled bed sheet. It looks like a very iron bed sheet or iron cloth. So it looks like completely, it looks plain like this. It has got no wrinkles on it. it looks completely plain. And sometimes if the cells are changing, then the doctor can even see little red patches on it. So doctor will take the biopsy of the stomach that will go for examination at the microscope. Doctor will also check us for bacterial infection with Helicobacter pylori. And the biopsies we also show whether there is Helicobacter present or not. In large number of patients, Helicobacter is usually present. And the biopsies will show that there is possibility, if not the definitive diagnosis of atrophic gastritis. So what is the treatment for atrophic gastritis and pernicious anemia? First and foremost is get rid of the Helicobacter pylori. Treatment is simple. Um, patient is given a combination of antibiotics and usually two antibiotics, sometimes three. And if the first treatment does not work, then a different treatment can be given. And hopefully that will get rid of Helicobacter pylori. Some Helicobacter are more stubborn to treat as compared to most. The second treatment is antacid uh, medications called proton pump inhibitors. Now these tablets I spoken about before in my ulcer videos and also my stomach cancer videos. So please watch that one. They're called PPIs. They are sold all over the world. Very, very good tablets and they will uh, keep it under, under control. It won't cure the atrophic gastritis, but it will keep it under control. And also because the patient has got low vitamin B12, and getting all the symptoms of B12 um, deficiency in the body. So vitamin B12 needs to be replaced. Now many of these patients, because they have no intrinsic factor left, they cannot absorb vitamin B12. They are usually given injections monthly or three monthly. Um, then regular endoscopies and biopsies are very important because once atrophic gastritis is diagnosed, endoscopist has seen it, because the risk of stomach cancer is much higher than without atrophic gastritis, then most centers will repeat the endoscopy every few years and take more biopsies to make sure there are no cancerous changes are taking place in the stomach. If unfortunately, patient does develop stomach cancer, then obviously the treatment depends on what sort of stomach cancer it is. If you're not sure about the treatment and the diagnosis of stomach cancer, then one my, my one previous video in which I talked about stomach cancer. I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you soon. If you like to watch more, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching.